We now have the option to add products directly into Google Merchant Center rather than uploading via a feed file. So when this might be suitable um, is if you have a relatively small product catalog that doesn't change a lot and that doesn't come in and out of stock. So those are the, those are the kind of the main three criteria that I can kind of think of where you can use this without having too much issue. It's a very easy way to add products to Merchant Center. It's an easy way to keep um, to edit them. But if your products change a lot and you have lots of new stuff coming in, stuff going out of stock, price changes, all that kind of thing, it would make it very difficult to keep on top of it all inside Merchant Center because you would have to go in and edit products individually every time something changed. The main one I can think of is that stock issue. If things are going in and out of stock, then you want that to be um, kept up to date live if possible through an automated feed. Um, but if that doesn't apply to you, if you've got a relatively small product catalogue, maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 products that remain the same and that don't change, then this might be a good solution for you to get your products into Merchant Centre. It's much easier than trying to fiddle about with a feed. So it's it's literally just a case of, if you're in your, in your, you're in your overview like this, you would go to products and then you'll see it just says add products one by one. So the time is taken, obviously, in the first time you do this, you have to enter all the information for your products one by one. So you've got all the information here. The um, Most of it is pretty self-explanatory, to be perfectly honest. One thing to note is it's always you've always got the basic and the advanced option with all these different um, sections. So I would always recommend that you toggle over to advanced um, to see what other options, because the, the, the point of this is you, as with any, any time you create a product feed, you really want to get as much information into your product feed as you possibly can to give Google that information to make so they know exactly what your products are and who they're relevant for. Um, so you can just come, th you just answer the questions basically. <laughs> so it's asking you for a barcode, um, you can add multiple identifiers if you want to, but anyway, your part number. So that's your manufacturer's part number if you have one. And then it's just asking you things. So again, we click over to advanced. You basically get a few more options at the bottom. So if you, um, if you have, so basically if you have a, a custom product that does not have, doesn't have the barcodes and all that stuff, this is where you would uncheck this box. So unchecking that box tells Google, this is a custom product. It's either hand, you, you, you maybe you hand make it, something like that. It's a custom product and they will not expect you to put barcodes or ISBNs or whatever in here. And you won't need part number and you won't necessarily need brand either. If you do have all that information, then you will need to keep this, keep this box checked. The ID, so this is the, the ID here. This is the Merchant Center ID. So if you have a unique, well, usually it's a SKU. If your SKUs are all unique for all your products, then you can use your SKU as the ID. If you don't have that, you can just leave it blank and Google will assign unique IDs to each product that you create. And then it's just a case of going through and adding as much information as you can. Obviously, anything that has an asterisk asterisk is required that would be things like the title the price the link to the landing page the image link and all that kind of thing um title obviously you just put your optimized title straight in here this does not have to be exactly the same as your website title this can be the fully optimized shopping ads title in here so if you um if you have multiple images for your products as well i would recommend that you add those here. So you can either put a link to an image or what's probably going to be easier for most people is to actually upload your images. So your main image link, this is the product, this is the image that will be shown in the shopping ad and any additional images obviously then will be, you get like a little carousel to scroll through in the shopping ad. So make sure that your main image that you want to show in your shopping ad is this one and then add as many as you can really here. That, are, that give context and add relevance to your product. Uh, scrolling down, obviously, you have to have a price. So you've got price and availability. 
if you check over to advanced you have um you're able to because obviously you can have in stock out of stock you've got back order pre-order okay and various options so if you do for example have items on pre-order that whoops then you would have to come in here and then you have to enter an availability date so that people can order them order them and know when that becomes available but all of this again it's quite self-explanatory if you have a sale so this is something that if you do run a sale at some point on your website you would want to come back in here so if you go on advanced obviously you just got price and availability if you had a sale then you'd want to come in here this is your full price so that would be say 100 whatever and your sale price would be 80 and then you can you can actually set it to say the sale will start on 1st of May or whatever okay you can even add your cost of goods sold here and all of that neat stuff sub subscription instalment subscription cost that kind of thing your condition again switch over to advanced and then you can add clothing variant products so you can add your colors sizes genders and age groups okay so really i mean the the best way to do this is to just come in and start playing because obviously you can you can play and, and create products and test everything um, and if it's not right you can just delete it and start again so, so this is all about with all the additional product information that you might want to add um delivery delivery and returns so usually you will set up your delivery and that there'll be a, there's a video on this you'll set up your delivery um inside the tools and settings here sometimes you will want to add shipping labels and that kind of thing in here most of the time that's not necessarily you can just leave that default and set it up inside merchant center okay um so product categories so this so the product type which i harp on a lot about the product type because it is very important but that is literally as you can see it's not even visible down here so you have to come down and go additional product data um promotion ids custom labels so um promotion ids when you want to run a promotion set up a promotion in, sh in google shopping you have to assign a promotion id to a product and then it will be added to your promotion for your, your ad extension um, custom labels can be used for all sorts of things i tend to use them for um, assigning like a price range to products but again lots of use cases for that but like i said the, the product category so the google product category if you don't actually add a google product category they will auto assign it for you and have they got a link here so these are predefined categories that google give you if you click on this link uh let's find there should be a link so there's a there's an excel sheet here that you can download and it's got a whole all of this thousands and thousands and thousands of them okay um so you can hunt through there if you don't put one in it will auto assign it and then this is where you add your product type in there okay um so like i said it's if you have got a small catalog it's a relatively easy way of adding products to your merchant center but just remember that obviously they are static if something changes on your website if you have a price update if you're if something goes out of stock or is on pre-order and it then becomes in stock from pre-order then becomes a normal product that's in stock then you will need to remember to go, to give yourself a, a note to come in here and update these but overall for a small catalog it's a really easy way of getting your products into merchant center another note that even if you already have a product catalog uploaded so let's say for example i don't know why you'd want to do this really but anyway just so that you know even if you already have a product feed and everything you know everything's all lovely you can still add another product you just go to your all products page you click the big plus blue button and then you can add another product manually in here as well in just the same way and then that will that will just be an additional product in here i'm not sure of the use cases for that because it would get i think could get really confusing if you have got sort of some products that are in a dynamic feed some that are not i don't know why you'd want to do that but just as an fyi you can do that if you want to um but hopefully that helps um 
And that's just another way of getting your products into Google Merchant Center.